With Jamie and Dakota, it was such a difficult role to cast for Jamie. Dakota came in very early and I knew in an instance that she was going to be Anastasia. She had every quality that I was looking for and is a sublime actress. And with Jamie's role of Christian Grey, it was tough because on the page, um, the level of perfection is nearly impossible. And Jamie is perfect. So <laughs> that, you know, he, we got to a point with Jamie where he was so correct for the role in so many ways. and. I was hoping that when the two of them came together that that would work, that there was that chemistry, of course, that everyone hopes and looks for. And when he came in, the two of them had such a sort of leveled balance of humor, firstly. Um, I just knew it was going to work. They were very sort of funny together, sweet and charming. And, you know, from that, the relationship really grew. And what a relief. Dakota has an incredibly sort of worldliness to her, I think from the world that she grew up and the background that she came from. But at the same time, there's a sweetness and naivety which shouldn't really match the worldliness that she has. So the fact that she had those two qualities was quite rare in one person. And I think that really was what drew me to her. And then from then, she had an intensity and a soulfulness that really um, sort of shone through as we moved, moved on with the role. And, you know, she's an amazing actress and I really feel sort of proud to have her, you know, as her first major role in, the, in this movie. From my perspective, what I really wanted from this film was to, set, to have this sense that there was this young girl who's seemingly falling prey and victim to power, success and gifts and all of those things who ultimately flips everything around and becomes the powerful one in the relationship. And that arc and journey for her was very, had to be very delicately played. And, um, you know, Dakota played it absolutely pitch perfectly. And I think that, um, you know, to be able to transition from someone looking, you know, kind of sweet, slightly ordinary, to the power that she has on screen by the end was no small feat. And she really pulled it off. I was less interested in, you know, the lifestyle that we aspire to. What I wanted more was that when you meet him, there's a shield that you really want to take down. And that when you see him and, you know, and he has a little bit of a twinkle, you want to make it brighter and you want that twinkle to grow. And you want that, um, that layering to start sort of coming down. And with Jamie, you know, it was really important to find an actor who wasn't just sort of one dimensional, but to have, you know, to be able to find someone that devastatingly handsome, but who is multi-layered, talented, and with a depth of soul in those eyes of his, you know, that's, that was really a gift for us because it was important that Christian had, uh, you know, the soul in which you kind of fall into and not just fall in love with the look. The meeting between Anna and Christian, it was, it's so delicately played because you don't want to overplay it and show her full hand in the first opening meeting and scene. And especially because essentially this is a, a two-hander in a way. It, it feels like it's almost a play, but just between two people, the entire movie. Um, so the interview scene, I just wanted it to be that, you know, she firstly she falls into his office and she's a little klutzy and she's not like the women that he surrounds himself with and she's a little bit different but not just that i wanted it to be that she you know challenges him a little she's a little bit more um uh she kind of sees through him faster than most people and you know it was a delicate play in the interview scene to try and sort of get that right The beginning of the movie, I felt like we sort of build almost like a false sense of security for the audience, you know, that it feels a little cosy and, you know, it's all a little wide-eyed and fresh and then we sort of lead into a lair. And then from that lair, I felt like we then go on a, a very deep, dark emotional journey so that it's not just about what everyone thinks it's about the sex and what everyone talks about that it's not just about that it's about this very intense emotional journey between two people who are trying to reckon with what the relationship is and what a relationship is because for both of them really this is the most intense and first relationship like this 
people have many preconceptions about that world and I didn't want it to be a chamber of horror and fear and you know it needed to be from the research that I did based on trust and love and an intensity in a relationship whatever that relationship might be so that when you enter into it it felt sort of womb-like but at the same time fun engaging and everything quite sensual as well as sexual of course but everything quite sensual and and a place of trust respect and boundaries and so and also I wanted it to be stunningly beautiful because here's the man that could afford to have everything made by Mark Brazier Jones who did the incredible furniture to you know things bought from you know all the high-end places in the world that supply those places. Hello, Valerie here with a pretty cool fact from Thelma and Louise. Did you know that Ridley Scott had vetoed the idea of Louise kissing Thelma at the end? But Saranen did it anyway without telling him. It was the last shot on the last day and Scott had no choice but to use it. And that, as they say, is history. Mwah! Subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest trailers. See ya!